Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. Well, hello, this is Bowtie Dave, and I'm out here at a client site real quick, planting up some philodendrons. You can see here's one right here, already planted. Uh, it's planted right at the soil level. We rescued some of the irrigation, but the, in this location, the Homeowners Association actually takes care of the, um, the irrigation, so I'm just doing it as best I can and being careful with it. Um, so. I just wanted to show you real quick, uh, just something real basic about this. First off, we're looking at my last philodendron to, to do here. You can see we got soil, we got good strong growth right here, that's wonderful. And this is the level that I want to plant in this bed. Now, a lot of times we go the other way with it, where we plant it high in the soil. Well, we are actually in a raised bed here, and this thing gets very good drainage. I dug down well, about that deep, and we're down into the sand, so this, this bed gets really good drainage. So I've got a little extra potting mix here in case we need it, and I'm gonna dig a hole. I've got a hole approximately the right depth here, and all that white stuff, that is not perlite, it is styrofoam, which is an absolute travesty. But you just wanna test it and see, and so the level of the soil is right about there. I'm still about an inch too high. So I dug out a little more and see that sand right there. This is pure sand. I would never buy from a gardener center that put styrofoam in there for drainage. That is just terrible. But uh, these came from Lowe's. They're in a little better condition. And uh, Let's figure out which way we want this to sit. I think we're going to want it to sit this way. Now, that way. So those leaves will turn toward the light. Unfortunately, this is on the north face, so it'll be a little slow doing it. This one over here that I planted, you can see, it's ready to kind of get going. Brand new leaves going. So, yeah, I think we're going to go good here. We got another tall shoot coming up right there. So, yeah, this will be a good angle. So I want to show you the roots on this thing. It's kind of interesting. So I'm on the job right now, so I didn't bring my tripod. I don't normally, but I uh, thought this would be very apropos for the channel. But, so anyway, you don't have to cut these things. You can save them, use them for other things. But you can see I'm kind of squeezing it a little bit. Watch this. This plant, now I'm going to hold it very carefully because it's a little brittle right there at the base. But now that, once I get a, there we go. Once I get a good grip on it, you see it slides right out. Now this isn't unusual. Got a little bit of root bound here. See these roots uh, actually are not too bad. The fact they're not going round and round and round is good, but Yeah, there we go. So you kind of tease those roots out, put that down in the ground, and they'll be more likely to go hunt for life. So there we see it, all buried in, mostly native soil. I did put a little bit of uh, the uh, miracle Grow potting mix. There's no sponsorship there, just what we had on hand. That thing is ready to go. You can see here, we'll cover it back over with the pine straw. People think that pine straw makes the soil acidic. It does not. In fact, pine trees don't make the soil acidic underneath them either. It's been well proven. The reason why grass doesn't grow well is because there's a lot of thick shade under a pine tree all year round. So pine straw is a very good alternative for ground cover.